friendly. I don't want a victim blame, but I think it might have something to do with your genes. They are quite loud. Also, he's not technically domesticated. I, I don't know what breed he is. He just appeared in my garden one day, and all he eats is like rats and offal and stuff. I'm really scared of him. Listen, I'm going to ask you to find it in your heart not to contact the police, because I shoplifted a big pallet of diarrhea medication from a flagship superdrug last week, and long story short, I could do with lying low for a while. Um, I'm not going to put him down. I'm not going to put him down because he's my only friend and I'm teaching him to bark the lyrics Fairy Tale of New York, the uncensored version. He's not a fucking snowflake. Now listen, I've got a dash because I burned through that diary medication quicker than I would have liked and baby's going to blow. But best of luck with everything. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Nathan Fode, six foot one, and I'm your next Bridgerton. You want to just start? We'll take it from the top. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Ow. Ow. Ouch. <sighs> Bridgerton. We've, uh, okay, full disclosure, I've never actually seen the show. I can just intuit it. You know the shows that are all in the title, it's like, you know, um, oh, I can't think of one right now, Stranger Things, Barney. Bridgerton, I'm fuming. What the hell is all this Bridgerton everywhere? Ugh, I have to go to Bridgerton. And he's white, so don't panic about that. Everything's just crazy in Bridgerton right now. I'm just gonna free associate. Bridge? A ton every day of this goddamn Bridgerton. I feel scared and alone and there's horses. I assume. And the role, like, he's straight. Cool. Good. Good. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I've played straight before. Um, ever heard of Bugsy Malone? Do you want to have a quick chat about that Sam, bitch? Sorry. Bridgerton. Whoa. <sighs> Another crazy day in Bridgerton. Is that- Right, who is that? Like, maybe it's more mumblecore Maybe it's more, like, a small, like, kind of girlsy, like- Bridgerton. Like, I just, it's so great you can't even know. I don't want to be stuck in Bridgerton for the rest of my life. Maybe it's just faces. <gasps> Do you guys know what the show is? Every day I spend in Bridgerton is another day spent in hell. Bridgerton, stop! Okay, which, which one of you goddamn Bridgertons ate all my, um, soda? Oh. Oh, God. And with that, I Bridgerton. And then what I want to do, I'll tell you what I want to do. Face down on the ground, smack my fucking nose and teeth right into the ground show you guys how much I want this. Some of this, like, um, like old-timey, kind of. This is exciting. Thank you so much for getting me involved. I don't like any animal that's bigger than it needs to be. Hens, for example. Goats, yes. Sheep, no. I don't like giraffes. It's the neck. Anything with a shell. Crabs, lobsters, scorpions. <laughs> Heaven for fend. It's this. It's the way that they, you know, the way that they move. They're very still and then, ooh, all of a sudden, piglets. I think they're so fun. But I suppose that does open us up to that whole strata of animals that are, are very cute and then grow up to be, you know, repulsive, which is a, a longer list than you'd think. Emus, seals, tapirs. As babies, oh my God, the cutest thing you've ever seen. Adults, <clears throat> dangerous predators, lions and tigers and, you know, huntsmen, spiders and things like that. In, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, the vibe on the ark is going to be very sort of, you know, it's calm, it's utopian. I don't think we want to be, oh God, you know, ooh, ooh, you know, is that, a, is that a leopard? As far as I'm concerned, if we're going to bring hyenas, on board. We're gonna have to give all the other animals guns. Um, monkeys. Tick, tick, tick is what I've got here. I say we just pile in as many of those as we can. They're cheeky, they're fun. Not gorillas though. Once again, it was so scary. I'm not too worried about insects because I just think they kind of, they're everywhere. We don't need to be scooping up fistfuls of worms. I'm telling you this now and this is a deal breaker. We're not taking frogs. I'll give you a good reason. You know, it's very that. And then it's very, you know, I. I'm already worried about the smell. Uh, just imagine it though. Being trapped in a room with a donkey. You know, I've been uh, uh, dribbling, you know, screaming. I don't know how donkeys work, but I'm actually not that worried about snakes. You know, I, if anything, I think this is gonna be quite a fun energy. Fuck, I've not even thought about bears, polar or otherwise. Oh, I have so much more work to do than I thought I did. Hi, Donald. Fucking annoying. <laughs> People are two-faced cunts. I'm just gonna say that off the bat. Have you thought about next steps or? I have a few ideas, um, and no, I haven't slept. God, I've got awful indigestion. Mental health awareness, it's massive at the moment. It's TikTok, it's Starbucks, it's Demi Lovato. How would you feel about stepping forward, clean slate and saying, yeah, okay, maybe that was a lot. But maybe I've not been feeling great. Maybe I've been living inside a psychotic episode for the past four years. But in and amongst all of that, I found the bravery, the inner resources to elbow my way onto the world stage, turn the free world into a dictatorship, and ruin the lives of millions. And maybe that's valid. Modelling, acting, print campaigns. <laughs> We've had offers for none of them. I'm actually feels like, do you want to do a sex tape? <laughs> um, but you... 
You don't. <laughs> Absolutely knackered. Jake offered me uppers earlier, <laughs> but I was too scared to take them, so I just did a fistful of paracetamol. <sighs> there have been talks about another book. You know, if we want to talk ghostwriters. Um, I do a little bit of scribbling on the side <laughs> for my sins. Online stuff, mainly. Well, tweets. So maybe we should, you know. Are you going to miss me? Imagine if I was like, if only you'd let me run the Twitter account. You provided a queer person uh, with a job, which I don't, I don't think should be overlooked. Speaking of, my payslips were wrong again. Uh, I hate talking about money. And the home of the, yeah, the brave. Let's talk entertainment for the concession speech. Oh, please. If he actually has it, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> I, so I said, I said, if he actually has it, I'll, I will eat my hat. <laughs> no, I feel like you're not listening. I said, I was saying, if he actually has it, which he might, I will take one of my hats, I have many, and I will, bit by bit, chew, uh, chew and then ingest it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a crazy fucking excuse to do that, reason to do that? Chapter one, women these days. Bracking-upon-Sudwell was a simple town, a safe town, full of children and veterans and dogs and that. Its citizens lived in perfect harmony, no matter their beliefs. There were two Polish food shops, for fuck's sake. But, as a premature winterly chill descended upon the streets, a modern kind of danger reared its horrifying head. David Whitman hitched up his 15 denier tights with a wry smile. Bunching at the knees, he chuckled to literally no one. That simply won't do. The tights, borrowed from one particularly hefty niece, were laddered from hip to ankle, plainly exposing the abundance of leg hair beneath. But David didn't mind, because he was deranged. What with contemporary feminism and that, he knew no one would question him, which, this narrator might add, is part of the problem. He clacked menacingly along the cobblestones in his custom-made size 18 heels, which were easier to get hold of than a serrated bread knife or most tropical fish, if you can believe that. As he adjusted his niece's chunky bra straps, something caught his eye. My, 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 a public toilet, he snarled weirdly. My favourite. The lady's symbol danced in his vision, her triangular Lisa Simpson dress tempting him like a siren to a sailor. He felt his pulse quicken at the prospect of stepping inside. The sinks, the grouting, all the liquid soap he could eat. Five minutes couldn't hurt, but he restrained himself. Not today, David, he muttered like a mentalist. You have bigger fish to fry. His mission tonight was simple. Infiltrate Delia Sweeney's women-only book club, gain the trust of the wives and mothers in attendance, and murder, murder, murder till he can't murder no more. This week's book, Anna Kendrick's Scrappy Little Nobody. Hi, my name's Nathan Fode. I'm reading for The Sassy Waiter. I'm represented by Curtis Brown and CAA, and I have an ulcer on my tongue, hence why I'm talking weirdly. I trained at the Guildford School of Acting, I don't blame you if you've not heard of it, and I have over 13,000 followers on Twitter. Here are my hands. Okay. Careful! The plate's quite hot! I can't work with kids, I hope that's okay. I don't know what you want me to say to you, Elijah. You either take the promotion or you don't. God knows it'd be nice to have a little extra money around the house. Lindsay's failing math. Michael's apparently bisexual, so I'm pretty sure it's going to cost us something at some point. And that possum under the deck is only getting bigger and more intelligent by the day. Can you imagine a vacation? <laughs> Eating fresh crab on the beach and hunting for the perfect seashell and getting so badly sunburnt we end up having to see a local doctor who makes things much worse. That's going to remain a fantasy for the rest of my life because you're too busy chasing a salary and eating loaded potato skins off your secretary's ass. Sorry. No, don't. I'm tired. Not from the day. Jesus Christ, I've been tired since 2002. 
I'm starting to see pizza rolls on the back of my eyelids. I can't sell Herbalife forever, Elijah. I'm, I'm happy to keep it long. <laughs> if that's okay, sorry, is that so annoying? I know it's part of the whole thing and I, I don't want to alienate myself this early, but it's just, it's not going to do a thing for me. Some people can really put it off, can't they? Like you guys, obviously, and um, I guess Greg Wallace, but my face is both round and asymmetrical. So it, it, it's, it's just not going to work. <laughs> um, if you're going to insist on touching it, um, you, you're welcome to trim the fringe as a compromise or um, maybe chop some texture into it. But um, I know myself and if I'm feeling, you know, insecure or, uh, or you know, ugly or, you know, I, it's just going to descend to me and I'm going to be such a nightmare to be around. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to wear the robes. I love anything oversized and uh, I'm excited about the singing. <laughs> We're gonna crush them. Um, maybe before we go, let's uh, let's go over all the the parts. Obviously, I don't give a fuck. Like we can just wing it. But if something's worth doing, it is worth doing correctly. <laughs> um, we never rehearse. I love all of the improvised um, performances and the impromptu battles and things like that. I remember the first time we did one, I thought, oh god, this requires such a uh, deranged, almost unrealistic level of skill. I'm part of the Dry Slope Skiing Society, and that's so chill. It's a Thursday night, kind of like we go for drinks afterwards, just a group of pals. Really, every time we perform. I feel so out of my depth and, and anxious and unwell. We didn't rehearse this. I say let's do one we know. I'll, I'll, I'll join in in a bit. Everyone in this group has their thing. Stacy, she's sarcastic in a way that I think borders on unkind. Luke, he does all of the rapping, um, but he's he's white, so I, I don't know about the ethics of that. M me, I'm the guy who takes a little bit longer to get my my part in my head. When I do, I'm golden. The demands of this group make me feel very ill. I never had music lessons or any formal training. That's a class system for you gals. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Maybe I'll just do this in the background. Okay, let's stop there, sorry. Very impressive, but you're gonna have to give me the key every time before we start. That's just standard. I haven't been to a lecture in weeks. I think they're rehearsing without me. C major, when you just say it like that, C major, that means nothing to me. That's meaningless, okay? Because I'm not Nina Simone. Hi, I know it's been a while since I've hopped on here. I just wanted to say that it's been really inspiring for me to see the way that my fellow Harry Potter castmates have come out in protest against Joanne's statement. Um, and I just wanted to add my voice to theirs. Obviously, I unequivocally stand with the trans community, um, along with Daniel and Emma and Bonnie. Um, and for the, obviously, for those of you who are wondering, no, te I, technically I wasn't, you know, in any of the films, but I did feverishly write to the casting department once a week from 2004 to 2010, begging them to let me be an extra, despite the fact that they filmed hundreds of miles from my home. So I thought, you know, if I don't say anything, people are going to be, oh, where's, you know, where's Nathan's statement? You know, Bonnie made a statement, but Nathan hasn't said anything, and right now we just can't afford to be silent. Please ask me to repeat that account directly to you. I know that millions of people in this country have been suffering. Thousands have died. Many are angry about what they've seen in the media about my actions. I want to clear up the confusions and misunderstandings, but I can't. In retrospect, I should have made this statement earlier. It's many years since I've said anything on television, but I'll do my best to answer questions after I've explained what happened. I also should clarify that I'm not here to speak on behalf of the government or the Prime Minister. I'm explaining my own actions and my own thinking. But Mr. is getting a press conference later and he will answer questions concerning government policy. And that was Dance With My Father by Luther Van Vandross. You're listening to the Magic Drive Time Hour. We're wishing you a gorgeous evening here, whether you're isolating at home with the kids, perhaps you're on your way to a shift as one of our super key workers, or maybe you're being frog-marched by the back of your hair into unsafe working conditions by an employer who cares more about productivity than whether you make it to your 40th birthday. Whatever your situation... Best of luck to you. <laughs> Next up, it's Dance With My Father by Luther Van Druis. Do you remember Clarissa Explains It All? She was gay. What about the boy that kept coming through the window? He was gay. Who was the puddle? There was a show about a teenage girl who could turn into liquid. The Queen's Nose? I never watched The Queen's Nose. I thought it was quite Tory. Might have to comment on something you've never watched. Do you notice anything different about me? Do you notice anything different about me? No. Why? And it's just this. Are you joking? For as long as... As long as it can be. I've lost a lot of weight. I've halved in size. Hang on. Are you purposefully not listening? No, 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 I'm listening. Tell me I've lost weight. When I see someone, I just see binary. I just see numbers and 
Dots. That sounds really scary. You've misunderstood what I meant. Are you going to ask me how I lost weight? Well... Diet and exercise. Okay. Diet and exercise. I thought you looked amazing when we last spoke. I think you look amazing now. That's one of the worst things you've ever said to me. I'd look at a picture of you one day old and I would see the same person that's looking at me now. Well, that's worrying. You should be sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Weight loss? Well, where's weight's gain in all of this? You're being a bit of a snowflake about this. I think I've listened to a little too much Lizzo to sit here and tell you that you look good after losing weight that you needed to lose. I love Lizzo. Lizzo's, you know, she's gorge. But if, if, for, if for whatever reason you met Lizzo for lunch... Can I ask a question? Is this the first time I've met Lizzo? If she turned up and she had... You know, Jennifer Aniston's body. And her face? No, 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 no. I've never met Lizzo before. Lizzo comes up to me looking differently than I expected. I'm not going to say, hang on a sec, what the hell? Well, no, you wouldn't say, what the hell? That feels quite combative. What the hell? Do you know what I mean? Imagine, imagine, if, imagine sitting down for lunch with someone. What the hell? I would say, it's so good to meet you. I, I got here a bit early. Ring, ring. Hello. Is that the tax man? How much? That wasn't a real phone call, but it could have been. Hi, my name's Nathan Fode. I'm a writer, comedian, sometimes actor, and this is why I oppose free school meals. As a British taxpayer, I understand the importance of being forced to pay your fair share. Potholes, the NHS, Rishi Sunak's printer paper, it all adds up and I'm proud to make my contribution. But today, after a cursory glance through my most unhinged auntie's Facebook page, I made an earth-shattering discovery. School dinners are a pillar of British culture, along with public urination and spite. Back in my day, there was nothing my peers and I loved more than piling into the lunch hall, rosy-cheeked and breathless from bullying that one boy who lied about his dad dying in 9-11, and tucking into a cheap and cheerful tray of turkey dinosaurs, and for some reason, pink custard. <laughs> Don't ask. But, as the years have ticked on, things have gotten fucking silly. These days, if you were to spend five minutes wandering the labyrinthian aisles of a primary school canteen, you'd most likely exclaim, Wait a second, these kids are eating diamonds, and I'm paying for them. Um... In schools across the country, children as young as five stuff their faces with publicly subsidised rubies and emeralds. Trembling dinner ladies scoop sapphire and quartz directly into the gaping moors of key stage three students. Rows upon rows of eight-year-olds crunching on amethysts like Labradors eating I am's dog biscuits. Potato smileys. More like topaz. Smileys. Hard-working British men and women dare to poke their heads through the windows. Can we have some diamonds? They ask, their voices trembling with fear. I only earn 49k before bonuses and my wife's flexi furlough run out in June. But the children only laugh, their mouths pouring with blood like tiny scrounging vampires. I ask you this, why should I, a modest TV writer with an exciting and diverse array of projects in development, fork out so that some selfish pricks a third of my age can gorge themselves on precious stones? It just don't seem right. And while we're on the subject, pregnant women, do they even exist? I'm not hitting on her, I'm just trying you to... You tried to tell me today that you'd like to have a goal. Two days! Two days! What kind of guy asks oh a goal to be their girlfriend? <laughs> God, looks like you caught me in the middle of doing my banking. <sighs> Wow, is that a travel flask? <laughs> You're so much more put together and traditionally mature than me. John, have you seen the news? No. God, I swear you need to use your phone for something other than Candy Crush and stalking Ariana Grande's Instagram account. Well, those are two equally recent references that paint a less than savoury portrait of the way that I live my life. Seriously, John, you need to try adulting for once. You know that coronavirus I was telling you about? The one that's killing all those people in China? Well, it's officially been declared a global pandemic, meaning that all of us have to isolate in our homes for the next three months. No travelling, no socialising, just sitting around and doing nothing. Oh, you've already started. I guess you did see the news. <laughs> yeah. Hi girls, um, 
um, God, what an absolutely Barbie time in our nation's history. I'm scared of my own home. <laughs> uh, now listen up, just because the world's on fire and granddad's tested positive, it doesn't mean you can start looking, feeling and stinking like shit. So, now, while I've got your attention, <clears throat> I just want to address some of the nasty, vicious rumours of... um people contracting coronavirus from the packaging of our last blusher palette now that is true but what are you gonna do oh my god i actually can't cope with all these videos of these italians singing on their balconies it's literally like life goals <laughs> um i wouldn't do it personally and you know why Obviously, this is, like, a really scary time. Um, it's certainly the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Um, the West End is, like, an absolute ghost town at the moment. Um, I, wa I wasn't technically in a show, but I could have been. So, all I'm asking you guys to do is to come together to protect society's most vulnerable at the moment, which, as we all know, is people who were in the ensemble of Phantom of the Opera buy them pasta buy them so much when i'm in my big sainsbury's or even my little budgeons um and i see little frail old ladies sort of shuffling around sniffling and grabbing the few last scraps of penny i like to elbow to the fucking ground and grab them by the wrinkly necks and say have you ever heard of book of mormon it is a particularly difficult time for me because one of the things that attracted me to this job in the first place was the fact that you get to touch strangers. Um, God, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? Uh, but now company guidelines require us to carry out demonstrations with a spoon sellotape to a broom handle. I think this is positive because out of darkness stems creativity. Who said that? Me just now. I'm going to be live streaming my one man show. Hi, guys. Um. Things are just going from bad to worst. I've not officially been tested yet, but unless someone's putting my sheets in the microwave at night, I don't think things are looking good. <coughs> I wanted to make a whispering and mouth sounds video for you, but unfortunately I keep scream coughing. So please uh, support me on Patreon and sign up for my OnlyFans. <coughs> Hiya guys, Kevin here, this is number one adult fan. Now I don't want to scare Munger or anything, but at the beginning of the week, me and some of the sixth form girls did a big trip down to London to see Lion King on the West End. We saw it the night before it closed. It was an absolutely magical experience from start to finish. What a display of talent and craft. But unfortunately, there was some Portuguese bird in the row in front of us, absolutely hacking the guts up. Carrie couldn't stand it, she started pelting her with minstrels. And I don't know if it's some sort of karma thing, but on the train home, she did quite quickly develop a Boring fever, and she stopped replying to my WhatsApp. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I mean, yeah, sex is fun, sex is cool, sex is two crazy kids just making music together. But I just think when you're in that little, that little window beforehand, that little pocket, I just tend to find that once sex starts, I'm like, sure. But I just always end up being like, listen up, Mister. This is what I say. I say, listen up, Mister. Why don't you put? that down, climb out, turn off the rent soundtrack that I made you put on, and let's just get back to that foreplay. I don't know what it is. Foreplay is more sensual and intimate. <laughs> um, and it's quite hard to get HIV from blowjobs, I checked. I receive sexual pleasure from giving hand jobs. I'm addicted to giving blowjobs. Pass it on. <laughs> No, but seriously, I do. I implore you to spread that around. <laughs> How about no, Leanne? You're the fucking liar. Juvenile arthritis, bitch. I'd go as far to say sex is over. I look forward to a post-sex society where it's just hangies and blowgies all damn day. Yeah, sorry. Okay, orchestra practice um, on Tuesday has been cancelled because of Mr. Garrity's aneurysm. So oh, sorry. I thought it was... I didn't Are we rolling? Fuck. <laughs> God, no one said anything. <laughs> oh, ask, I don't mind. Hi, sorry. Just so we can fully sort of... You want us... We're sat here for the whole... Okay, and do you want us doing sort of soldiery things, even when the camera's not... Yeah, okay. How long is that going to take? Right then, thank you. I hate the costume. Do you think we'll get to meet Benedict Cumberbatch? Like at lunch? No, I, I'm not either. It's just my mum's, like, obsessed with him. <laughs> sorry, what's my cue for... Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Oh god, sorry. I didn't realise we were... Why don't I ever know when we're rolling? Maybe say it in a much louder, clearer voice? <sighs> Cold. <laughs> I actually don't really get the whole Richard Madden thing. Like, obviously, if he came over and spoke to me, I'd say hi, but... What's your character's name in this? 
Well, I think we were just supposed to pick one, so. Okay, well, what's your real name then? Because I'm gonna be saying it as the camera goes by. Well, because we're chatting and I'd obviously know your name. Oh, I hate being dirty. <laughs> have you built a backstory for your character? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. He's gay. <laughs> oh, we're all gonna stay friends after this, I can tell. Great job, everyone. That was amazing. I'm not trying to be ungrateful, but I don't really understand why we have to have like three banquets a day. Have you ever noticed that? It's like every morning it's a full breakfast buffet and it's like we don't need that. Sometimes you just want granola and fruit. Because the problem is, obviously, I know myself and the, if the food's there and it's just going to keep like magically fucking regenerating like these huge heaping piles of scrambled eggs, I am going to eat them. And I'm just, I'm just like gorging breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'm ballooning. Every single night at dinner, it's like these great big fucking like turkey legs and chicken and sausage it's also like old timey and massive and it's like am i mad am i the only one that's like bothered by this i feel like henry the eighth obviously there's no point going to any of the teachers about this stuff because the pastoral care in this place is dog shit you go to them with a problem and they're just like oh you're betwixt you know they just sort of say something that sounds vaguely magical and wise but it's ultimately meaningless and you're like cool this is my life you'll love this the other day in charms i was like um does anyone have a spell that's gonna stop me from being hungry all the time <laughs> Oh, but do, do you actually know one? Because I do think that'd be quite helpful. It's fucking dog shit. <laughs> okay, do you mind if I look inside? Lovely. Oh God, that's rancid, isn't it? Oh, that's really bad. Well, it's a bit smaller and more of a bin than I was expecting. Um. My boyfriend and I both work from home, so ideally we'd need a room that could double up as an office space and also wasn't inside a bin. No, um, and if there are rats or foxes, just befriend them, yeah. And is there any wiggle room in terms of painting the walls or is it just, just the natural fetid insides of a bin? Okay, and the price? Most of my income. I'll take it. Now, I don't know how you're going to take this, and rest assured I mean no offence by it, but I thought the shop was closed. From across the street, okay. I don't know what it was, I don't know if it's something that you've done with the sign, or you've made some changes to the shop from, but from across the street, I thought the shop was closed. Okay, and I'm not having a go, so don't apologise. Don't apologise, so I'm not having a go. But I'm just letting you know that I thought the shop was closed and I wasn't going to come in. I came across the street, I thought, oh, it's open, and I came in, and thank God I did. Okay, but I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about future customers, I'm thinking about you losing out on business. Okay, and I won't be able to live myself if I didn't say anything, because that's just the kind of person that I am. <laughs> that's lovely, thank you. Sophie? Sophie, sweetheart, mummy's leaving. Sophie, God, sometimes I wonder whether she's deaf or something. She never responds when I shout her name or anything. But seriously, do you think I should be worried? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, you are joking. <laughs> this is exactly what we need as a culture and I'm having a nice time. These parents just told their kid to say bye to me as they were leaving the shop. And, he, and the kid said bye bye and then left a pause and said poo man. I'm just, I'm racking my brains thinking of what I possibly could have done to deserve that. And I'm coming up short because I didn't say a word to the boy. And now I'm Pooh Man forever. His parents sort of laughed quite manically and started apologising. And I was like, oh, don't worry, it's fine. But we all knew it wasn't fine. Hi, hello. Thank you so much for coming into the police station. I understand you want to report your daughter missing. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to ask in a completely non-judgmental way how she managed to get out of your sight. Now, I hate to be doing this because, as you know, I'm a parent myself, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to renew your contract for next year. Our budget just keeps getting smaller and smaller, and I think we can all agree that ever since you made that sexual harassment claim against David, office morale has just plummeted through the floor. 
You simply must visit. I finally got the place just how I like it. Plenty of natural light, marble features, and a nice big cunny. Please, please, you must see my cunny. It's a nice spacious cunny of the entire gated community. I have the largest cunny on the street, which is a fact that attracts much scorn and derision from the sluts down at the cancer research. But I say to them, ladies, empowered women, empower women. Why don't you grab an antipasti pack or a bottle of something red and we'll guzzle them from my cunny? It's been a dream of mine ever since I was a little girl reading Virginia Woolf atop my father's lap. Woolf stresses the importance of a room of one's own, which I took to mean something quite different entirely. I read that sentence, looked my father dead in the eyes and said, Daddy, one day I shall own a cully so large it will require titanium support beams and a full-time guide monkey. <laughs> Hi, my name's Nathan Fode. I'm auditioning for the part of body positive gay man in Giacomo online content. Um, and I, I know that you said that you wanted a full body shot. I'm actually just going to give that one a miss, if that's okay. Cool. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I actually prefer looking like this. I wouldn't want a more traditionally muscular or slender physique. The path to thinness is chaotic and ultimately bad. Body hatred, <laughs> that's out. Whereas body positivity, mind you, that's in. That's in. Thank you. No, it's actually a really good question. Um, it has been a mad one. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it wasn't an eventful day, not your typical Monday. Um, but, you know, aside from the new followers and the retweets and the likes and the attention from celebrities, what I'm left with, overwhelmingly, is a feeling of relief. <laughs> because I have now reached a place where I don't have to try anymore. And that's very relaxing. Sir, sorry, ik habe ein Frage. Um, if colours come up in the exam, what am I supposed to do? Apparently I like literally can't even learn to drive. <laughs> I know it's so fucked up, but think about it, like, traffic lights and if someone's like, oh my god, that yellow car's gonna crash into you. I like, I'm like, what yellow car? <laughs> my dad's a policeman, Sinead, I think I know what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna have to do this bit for me. Because I don't know, I can't tell, it all just looks pink. I've told him he knows. Because I can't see it. Sorry, that is literally not blue. <laughs> like, you're, everyone, sorry, blau. Everyone's saying it's blue. I'm literally looking at it, I can't see that. Like, that just looks like nothing to me. Well, obviously I can see it's there, but. You're gonna have to do the bubble writing, because I can't do it. Yeah, do it really big. And then I'll just fill it in with a red pen. Oh my god, is it not? Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, when you put it like that, I'm like, oh god, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, these are great, thank you so much. Hiya, my name's Chris, thanks so much for seeing me. Um, I'm gonna be singing Stars from Les Mis. Um, as you can see, I'm probably a bit more of a Tenardier than Javert, uh, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. <laughs> As an actor, I have a really expandable skill set. Um, I'm super fun to be around. Um, I do love a drink on a Friday after rehearsals, um, and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday too. Um, I can do most accents, and I'm not afraid to do blackface. I'm actually learning the ukulele at the moment, which is obviously pretty random, but you've got to stay competitive. Um, I'm really passionate about fitness, and I'm actually starting my own personal training business on the side, which is something no actor has ever done before. I'm currently living with my girlfriend in a lovely little place out in East London. Um, and I do mention my girlfriend there because I think it's important for you guys to know that I am heterosexual and that has currency. You're not going to catch me mincing around the rehearsal room like a little gay fanny.
Thank you guys so much for your consideration, I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to round off by laying myself on the line and saying, God, do I need this job? Because I did spend all of my parents' money doing an MA at Italia Conte and I'm addicted to window cleaner. Please!